All right, let's treat these modes mathematically. Let's start with mode one, sum. Now, the reason I called it sum is the way we're going to find it is we're going to add the two equations of motion and see what happens. So we had minus mg over L xA minus k xA minus xB minus D. Right? It was one equals mxA double dot. And the other one was minus mg over L xB minus k times xB minus D minus xA equals mxb double dot. So we're literally going to add them. If this equals this and this equals this, then this plus this has to equal this plus this. So I'll do the grade school version of adding these equations and put the line there and a big plus symbol there. And we'll see what we get. Well, minus mg over L times, oh, I missed 1d and all that. How is that possible? There we go. Um, minus mg over L times xA minus or plus xb minus d. So you end up with this term gives you minus mg over L times xa plus xb minus d. And then we look at the k term, right? k times this. But if you add these, you see you have plus xa here and minus xa there. Those cancel. And you have plus xb minus d and minus xb minus d. Now those cancel. So when you do the plus terms, that part goes away. Right? It's still coupled. It still has xa and xb in it. It's just the spring part went away. And then those equal, if we sum it, the mass times xa double dot plus xb double dot. So we've taken a coupled equation of motion, and we've created yet another coupled equation of motion. So it's not clear that it helped. But notice one thing, our sum, we call the sum, it kind of made a sum of the two coordinates, the xa plus xb minus d. That's the two uh, displacements from their equilibrium position. And we sort of almost have it here, the acceleration of the two coordinates. If you were to take xa plus xb, take two derivatives to get the accelerations, it'd just be x double dot plus b double dot. But notice this. So let's just do some mathematical trickery here that we could write. Um, that xA double dot plus xB double dot equals xA plus xB even plus D double dot, the whole thing. Right? So we can think of this as the second time derivative of this whole thing as an individual coordinate, is the way you could think about it. And the reason you can stick a D on there is because what is the second time derivative of a constant? It's zero. It doesn't add anything. So if we take two times derivatives of this, just a double, the second time derivative of that plus second time derivative of that equals that. So what I'm saying is it's okay to write that side that way. And if you do, then you get this. Uh, uh, let's see, you get um, the masses go away. And that you get that this term, xA plus xB plus D, double dot, the mass on it canceled, equals minus g over L times the coordinate. Minus g over L, xA plus xB minus d. And if you look at that, and you do what I say, you remember, whenever I see that equation again, I know the answer. It's a sinusoid. Right? We said, whenever you have second derivative of something equals the negative constant times the thing, we know the answer. We don't have to go guessing sinusoidal solutions again we know that this is uh, going to be, the solution is going to be sinusoidal motion. Right? So this is the sum E O M. And we know the solution from our previous work is a sinusoid at the natural frequency equals square root of G over L, right? just like it's a single pinion. So one of these two normal modes seems to act like a regular pendulum. Let's see if that makes any sense. Let me get it back out here. And there they are. And let me uh, recouple them. And let's remember what the sum mode looked like. All right. The sum mode was basically this. 
of them going back and forth like that. Right, that was the sum mode. So let me time it. Let's see what we get. Let's see if it matches theory. So here I've got uh, my timer and go. And we're going to count 10 cycles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 15.3 seconds. So 10 periods was 15.3 seconds. So the period that I measure is 1.53 seconds. And the omega that I measure is 2 pi over the period. And that comes out to about um, 4 radians per second. So we measured about 4 radians per second. Well, guess what square root of g over L is? It's about 4 radians per second. 9.8 over 0.6 is about 16. Square root of 16 is about 4. And that's the same answer if you think back or go watch the video for the individual pendulum. Right? And the reason is the spring isn't doing anything. We have now shown physically and mathematically and through solving equations of motion that the spring is doing nothing. And you can even tell by looking at the motion, the spring is not being deflected. Right? The spring does nothing. The sum mode is the one that basically takes the spring out. It took it out of the equation of motion. There's no k in this equation of motion. And sure enough, the answer for the sum mode was the same as for this free pendulum. So this is why we use normal modes. They have insight. And later, I'll show you how you can use them to solve more complex problems.